Okay, welcome everybody to this graduate recruitment webinar. Um, I'm going to introduce myself and then I'm going to hand over to Helen. So my name's Helen Royston and I am head of EYITT at Best Practice Network. Hello everybody and I am the other Helen. <laughs> so I'm <laughs> Helen from Spring. So um, I work for Spring by Action for Children and I'm um, the quality support advisor um, for the organisation. So we're just going to talk you through um, some more information about working for Spring and completing the qualification. So one of the things we wanted to talk to you about is why would you want to choose graduate recruitment? Um, this is a really exciting opportunity to get the best of both worlds. So we've put some of the bullet points up there for you to have a look at. One of the main benefits is that you'll be able to train as you're earning. So obviously because you'll be employed, you'll be earning your wage and you'll also be able to complete your early years teacher status at the same time. And not only will you be able to do that, but you're going to have your support of your employer as you're on programme. It's going to help you to become an expert in teaching right across that early years age range. So from birth all the way through to five. And one of the excellent benefits as well is that this programme is fully funded by the DfE. You're going to gain lots of expert subject knowledge, um, which is backed up by the most up-to-date research and best practice approaches in the early years. And one of the things we really, really love about the programme is that you really get to develop your leadership skills. So it's about how you can support others, how you can start to lead your team. Um, and that's going to obviously have a really positive impact on your setting. And it's about how we can increase and how we can improve the support for the children and families in all of those settings for spring. So, so hello over to me. <laughs> so who are spring? Um, so basically just a little bit of background. So we're an, um, a modern award-winning childcare brand and we offer services from birth to 14 through spring nurseries, but also um, our out of school clubs, which we call Oscars. Um, and like it explains there, it's about those seamless childcare choices. So it's children in school going in and out of school club, as well as those baby places, funded places and, and that kind of um, broad offer. And um, there's also a link to our website there. So there's lots of information that we couldn't possibly cover in this session and um, for further information about spring and what and what we do. This is quite sort of small and hard to see, but I can always forward out the original copy. But this is our career um, pathway so it's something that we're quite passionate about about sort of when when staff start with us what's the next steps in their career and how do they get there so it gives every single position within the organization and um, the opportunity for progression through different pathways so um, it does explain there about pathways for Oscars but also pathways for spring some of those might be specialized roles such as forest school um, and um, boogie mites coordinator things like that um, obviously, one of those pathways is the early years teacher training as well. And it is our ambition to have um, an early years teacher in every one of our sentence. So because we believe in our people, um, we've got quite a lot of um, benefits package as, as an, an employer. So those are just some of the benefits there. So there's 60% off childcare if you've got your own children attending the setting. Um, a company pension, cycle to work scheme, employee discount. Um, you will be eligible for blue light cards or blue light discount. Um, 25 days holidays plus bank holidays. Um, and like I mentioned, the, the personal um, development as well and that clear um, career progression. And obviously Monday to Friday as well, which is always bonus. And um, we've just got a little video now to just quickly watch, which I think kind of gives some more insight into spring as in a bit of a nutshell. Some of our staff come here as an apprentice and then drive to become a manager. And actually, we have actual case study sites where this has happened. So I've worked actually for children for five years, but I've worked at St. Bart's for 12 years altogether. I started off as an apprentice and I've worked my way up to manager. 
actually the children is just yeah it's a good company to work for the team is very strong we all have a strong bond we all work well together help support each other any way we can i was very lucky that when i started here they put me through going to college which i never thought i would do at the age i was I qualified with my level three at college while working here. So it's been quite a journey, but I've loved it. I've always wanted to work with kids. And when I see this opportunity, I was literally like so lucky that I was to get it. I have worked really hard on my coursework and Amy and everyone here has been so supportive and helping me. Having a supportive team, a really welcoming team is another reason why I love it here as well. When someone starts with us, they can see quite clearly what training we provide to equip them for that next step in their career. I think this is really great because it means that when people join us, there's no ceiling to what they can achieve. They don't feel like they need to move on to get that promotion. They can actually build their career and stay within Spring as an organisation. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Helen. So, yeah, that was just a little video just to talk through sort of the, the opportunities for progression um, within spring. Super. Thank you, Helen. OK, so as you can see, it would be a fantastic opportunity um, to gain employment and have a job with such fantastic employers. And it's also a really exciting time to be joining early years. So as you can see here, the government at the moment are really providing that support and they're wanting to put a package in place which is going to really help to build upon the training, the qualifications and the support that we can put in place. And one of the things, as you can see on that list, as part of that £180 million improvement is EYITT. So they're really wanting to back and support people gaining that graduate level specialist training. Another really good thing at the moment is that we do have early years very much at the forefront and in the headlines. So you'll probably have seen that the Princess of Wales at the moment is leading on her own early years campaign as well. And her campaign, again, is all about increasing that awareness of how important the first five years of a children's life are and actually if we get this right that's what's going to have the impact on our future well-being thinking about adults and the things that they might want to go on to do in their future and this is very much backed up in research as well and we know that it's early years teachers that make that difference so there are lots of different research reports that all talk about the significant difference that it makes by having a graduate leader. So by taking part in EYITT, one of the things, again, that we really focus on is how you can improve your own practice, but equally how you can take that learning back to your setting and make a difference and lead others to change their practice too. If you choose to complete the course um, and join as a graduate recruitment, then it means that you're going to become a specialist or an expert across that age range from naught to five. So it is a level six qualification. It will give you that specialism for working with the very youngest children, thinking about babies and toddlers and preschool age. But we also do spend time looking at how that changes to national curriculum expectations with a focus in reception class as well. Just to be clear, um, and I know it was on the advert, it's not qualified teacher status. There is a difference. This is early years teacher status because it's about working with those youngest children. So why would you want to train with us? Um, Best Practice Network have been delivering early years professional status as it was originally all the way from 2007. 
Um, we are really proud to say we are the largest provider of EYITT, and we're still seeing significant increases in the numbers of trainees that we have on programme with us year on year. Um, and we've got an exciting opportunity here because for the first time, we're also running a cohort that starts in January 2024. So for you, if you took up this fantastic opportunity and became employed with Spring, you would be following the route that you can see at the bottom here as our graduate employment based route or GEB for short. So as you can see, it's fully funded by the DfE and your setting will receive £7,000 in an employer incentive payment to help to support you on programme to complete your studies um, and to be able to release you to go out on your placement so that you can experience teaching in those different settings. And you'll also be invited to come to some specific training day sessions each month. So you've got the opportunity to join up and have those discussions with other trainees on the programme. What will the programme look like to you? So we do have different options. Some people prefer to attend the face-to-face -face training sessions and we run those in different locations, usually in hotels in different areas of the country. But some people we appreciate would prefer to do it virtually and would like to take that up as remote learning. So you do have an option there of which one you would like to choose. It is a mixture of some self-study yourself and then also those face-to-face -face training days and support from your tutor. So you will get access to an online resource library that we call Canvas, and you'll have a personal tutor all the way through the programme, and they will come out to observe you in your setting as well as when you're on placement. And then Helen and her team will make sure that you have a really good mentor in the setting that you're based, and also a lead trainer and those two people are there to make sure that you can access the training you need and go on the placements that you need and have all the support to make sure that you make good progress. This is a little bit of a visual so you can see what it looks like at those different stages when you're completing your EYITT. So everybody starts off in the induction phase. And during the induction, you'll be given lots of information and shown how to use the different systems. So you'll get IT induction to help you with the online systems and navigating those. You'll also have an induction session about the program. And then you'll complete what we call is a needs analysis. And that's just about you reflecting on your own strengths at the moment. So maybe you might be really experienced in special educational needs and disability, but you might feel that you don't know as much about phonics. So it will be very different for everybody. It's just about you identifying what your starting points are. As you can see, each term is quite similar. So each term you have some training days, you have some learning sequences to work on in the age group where you're based. And that's just about you planning and assessing the children's progress and delivering some activities for them. At the end of each term, we also have an end of term review so we can see how you're doing and set you some targets again to help you to move forward. And that's all very, very formative as we go through each term. And then right at the end of the programme, we go into our recommendation phase. And that's just to make sure you've got all the evidence you need against the early years teacher standards. And when you're successful um, and you get your early years teacher status, we also put together a transition plan, which will help to support you in your first year as an early years teacher. And I know one of the things that Helen's talked to me about lots is that progression as well within the company. So obviously, if you're successful, um, it's very much about taking on a leadership role um, and working with the SLT and the rest of the team in the setting. So again, there'll be that opportunity for progression once you've completed your qualification, if obviously Spring are happy um, with everything else that you've been doing in setting. I did mention the mentors before. So again, that will be somebody who's based in the setting where you are employed. And it's somebody who we would consider to be an expert in early years. 
so that they can help you and they can talk to you about their own practice and share their own experiences, but also so they can observe you and give you some feedback on your practical teaching. And for all of those mentors, we make sure again that we spend time with them and we train them. So they will also have induction, mentor training and drop-in sessions to attend with us to make sure that they're providing really, really strong support for you. I did mention placements a little bit on the overview, um, and this is just so you know what kind of placements you might need to do. There are a couple of requirements that come from the DFE, and that is that anybody who is training to be an early years teacher has to cover each of those age groups from naught to five. So you must spend some time in babies, some time in toddlers, some time in preschool, and some time in reception, and some time in key stage one and key stage two. And one of the other requirements is it has to be in two settings. So if you're successful and you work in a spring setting, for most people, if in your setting you cover not to four, you'll just need to go and do a school placement which will be 20 days in reception and five days across key stage one and key stage two. Um, the 20 days in reception is so that you can really put a strong focus and spend some time teaching phonics and also teaching maths. So you have some activities again to plan for whilst you're in that school group. In key stage one and key stage two, you're not required to directly teach it's more about you experiencing, observing, and seeing what those next stages are. So you get the opportunity to talk to the teachers or maybe the literacy leads and find out how the children's learning progresses whilst you're in those age groups. How do we assess it? So as I said, each term it's formative and we'll gather together the observations that your mentor is completing and the observations from your personal tutor. We'll mark and we'll look at the sequences of work that you're creating and we'll also see if you're making progress towards your targets each term. We do have one reflective account, which is like a written essay, which happens a little bit later in the year. And all of those different things help us to build together the evidence that we need to say that you've mastered the early years curriculum. So we make a summative judgment against those standards, and then we'll put you forward and recommend you for that early years teacher status. So what do you need in order to be eligible um, for your early years teacher status? You do need to have a degree. We do need to see that you've got your GCSEs in English, Maths and Science, and those are at a grade C or a grade four or above, or it could also be a recognised equivalent. So, for example, you might have done an equivalency test in one of those subjects. That's absolutely fine as well. You do need to have the right to work and study. We will check on your competence in your spoken and written English. You need to have a sat satisfactory DBS check, of course, because you're going to be working directly with children. And the one at the bottom won't be relevant for you because you're employed in a setting. If you are in the situation where you have a GCSE which is missing, we just wanted to share this information with you to give you an option to complete an equivalency test. Because we have lots of people applying with us who are in that situation, we are really lucky that we've managed to broker a little bit of a discount with equivalencytesting.com. So there is a code there that you can use if you want to, if you're in that situation. And as you can see, there's two different options. You might feel ready to sit down and take the exam. You can do that straight away. Or if you feel that you need extra time to revise, you can take part in some little homework assignments, which help to prepare you and get you ready to take the test. So if you are interested, there are a few things that we can do to help you to take that next step. We've put on the screen there the Best Practice Network website. So feel free to go on the website, 
have a look at the frequently asked questions. There's lots of information and videos on there if you want to find out a bit more about the qualification. If you've got some specific questions and you want to talk to the team, it doesn't matter what that's about, please feel free to use the EYITT at bestpracticenet.co.uk email that you can see there. So that could be questions about your qualifications. It could be questions about different parts of the programme, like the placements. Um, it could be things about visas, anything at all that you want to ask. The team are there to help you. Um, we've also added on there our Twitter and our Facebook. So you can have a look. You'll be able to see pictures, for example, of some of our trainees that are on programme now um, and see what they're up to.